We actually have some non-electoral news tonight, and the only reason we've interrupted our presidential coverage is because this is a truly remarkable story. You're about to meet a group of Florida parents whose teenage children were hooked on either drugs or alcohol. But the parents say the rehab center where they sent their kids is far worse than the addiction. With an exclusive look inside that rehab center, here's Times investigator Alan Cohn. I was like something from the Twilight Zone. Everyone was yelling like, stop, wait. Two people on, you know, grabbing me, had me up against the wall. It was two years ago, but for 18-year-old Leah Marchesol, the memories are still vivid and still terrifying. These victims is grabbing my legs, trying to pull my legs up. And it was family night at an Orlando drug rehab center named SAFE. Immediately started talking about me and how, how they need to pay attention to me. They need to put me in there. And I was just like, whoa. But Leah, who was 16 years old at the time, wasn't the one in her family who had the drug problem. It was her older heroin-addicted sister, Jessica. Leah, her mother, Kim, and father were just supposed to be there for support. They did this weird thing where they flapped their arms for motivation to talk and... It, it was just weird to be around. It was like something from the Twilight Zone. Startled by what she saw. They were like, look at your daughter. She's so, show, showing signs of drugy behavior. Angered at what she heard. I just wanted to get out of the building. Leah bolted for the door, but ran right into a nightmare. The next thing I know, they have me like this, with like two people on you know, grabbing me, having me up against the wall. When you saw Leah pinned against the wall, against her will, what were you thinking? It was wrong. It, it was very wrong. But Leah's mom would do nothing to stop what was happening. Why? Because she and her husband were told unless they agreed to leave Leah there that night, her older drug-dependent daughter Jessica would be kicked out of the program. Sacrifice one child for the other? How do you decide? Yes, we do require that. And if they don't, then they have to remove the other child because the family, this is a family treatment program. And unless the entire family is in treatment, it doesn't work. So Kim Marchisol wound up signing Leah into an intensive 30-day evaluation program at SAFE. Not because she believed her daughter had a drug problem, although Leah experimented with marijuana, but because of the agonizing choice she was forced to make. You were being held hostage against your will. Yes, and I, I couldn't even talk to my parents. I was like, just let me talk to my parents. Kim would leave Safe's facility that day in tears, knowing in her heart, she says, it was a mistake. But for Leah, the worst was yet to come. The next thing they told me was that I had to do a strip search. And I was like, <laughs> no, I'm not strip searching for anyone. After fighting and protesting for hours, Leah Marchisolt says instead of a strip search, she agreed to go into a room like this one and remove her clothes so they could be checked for drugs. But after she disrobed, Leah claims this woman, Vivian Victor, walked in with nine other women. And I sit in this chair and I'm holding this blanket on me and all these women are pulling the blanket off of me. And this Victor is grabbing my legs, trying to pull my legs up to like search, you know, to see what was in there or whatever. And I was just screaming and like crying. We do not do a strip search that is any different than any other treatment program. We do a legitimate strip search for legitimate reasons. Is that so? We asked Jim Gilliland, a respected drug counselor in Miami, for two decades. Upon admission, possibly I might understand looking at or through a person's baggage. Strip searches um, I've only heard of in prison. SAFE is not run by the Department of Corrections. It doesn't accept state funding. It's a private, for-profit, Christian-based drug rehab center for teenagers. Are you looking to God for the answers? Are you staying inside yourself? It's a fundamentalist uh, Christian organization. Uh, very, very extreme fundamentalist Christian organization. And it's real subtle in the way it's, it's brought out. This is a controversial approach to right. drug rehab. Yes, it is. Why do you think it's so controversial? 
I think because it's the high level of accountability. It's the fact that we have parents that um, come into the program that we expect to make changes and to, uh, to examine themselves. Albert Murphy has organized a group of former SAFE clients and their parents in hopes of shedding light on what's taking place inside this unassuming building outside Orlando. Murphy says she began having serious doubts about the program soon after enrolling her son Weaver into it. It wasn't, she says, just the cost of the program. This was mortgaging my soul to accomplish this. How much money? Um, I think over the 10 months that I participated in the program, I paid about $20,000 total. There's no doubt Albert Murphy's son Weaver was a troubled kid, hooked on drugs, arrested for DUI, and for forging checks to support his habit. They assured me that my son would be moving out into the community and restarting his life rather quickly, like within several months. But it's been several years, and despite Alba Murphy's efforts to get her son out of safe, Weaver Hastings is still here and still on drugs. Not marijuana or cocaine, but an amphetamine named Adderall, which is often given to children with attention deficit disorder. My plan was to have my son um, meet with an exit counselor and to have him come to understand what had just happened to him and get him some therapy specifically aimed at people that were recovering from cultic experiences, high demand groups, whatever you know you want to call it. Our relationship has been so incredibly strained for the past two years that um, I, it's difficult for me to even remember who she is. At the end of her rope, and in the last ditch effort to get her son back, Alba Murphy took the extraordinary step of having her son arrested for violating his probation. But the effort failed, and Weaver Hastings returned voluntarily to SAFE. Well, he was in jail for almost a month because his mother said that we were a cult. You tell me if that's a good parent. I don't know. Lorena Parrish is the executive director of SAFE. Could you respond to her concerns that she feels that her son was turned away from her by the program? Never. Lucy Moore was a SAFE client and was with Weaver Hastings in a group session. They gave him a blue plastic chair and put him in an 8 by 10 um, secluded room and um, told him to destroy the chair and that the chair symbolized his mom. I'd say everyone in the whole group heard him for a good 30 to 45 minutes slamming and demolishing this chair against the walls, screaming, yelling. He came out of the room and almost passed out from exhaustion. Safe, safe definitely did not turn me against my mother. I just currently find it to be too, I mean, I guess dangerous could be a word for it, um, or just possibly harmful to my recovery for me to communicate with my mom. They still have my child and they've destroyed my family in the process. My parents were just like, this is crazy, we're pulling me out. Leah Marchisol was never able to escape, but her older sister did. And when that happened, Leah's parents came back and finally signed her out of state. It felt like they had no idea what I could have gone through and I didn't even want to talk about it. On the day that I die, I regret that I wasn't strong enough to, um, to find out what I, I know it was in my heart, and I knew what, what was right, and I don't want any other parent or any other family, any other person to have to die with that same regret. A couple of days after we visited Orlando, we received this four-page letter from SAFE's Executive Director, Loretta Parrish. In it, she not only describes the former SAFE clients and their parents, who talked to us as, quote, a coalition of liars and cowards, she also describes them as, and we are quoting directly, a coalition of cockroaches. Now, tomorrow on The Times, we're going to give you a chance to see for yourself an exclusive look inside SAFE. You'll see what we saw and then decide for yourself.
job? And families talking about uh, lawsuits at all? They want to file a lawsuit against SAFE, and that is in the planning stages. They are looking for an attorney to represent them, and at some point they probably will be filing a lawsuit. Great story. Alan Cohn, thanks very much. More